when when I when I measured these shares right here, and that's you need a you need a good micrometer, a good good micrometer, and and you would measure this like here, you would measure it here, here. I'm talking about here, 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 here. Uh, you you would not just take a measurement on it to be done with it. You would measure it uh, until that that shaft would turn true in there and not be egg shaped, not have an oval oval shape to it. And that's the reason that you turn this in such a small increments is not to end up with an egg shaped shaft. It needs to be round. It can be smaller. Uh, and, and this one is. It's uh, if I if I take a measurement, that that measurement right there is. If you you can see that, it's one and five hundred thousandths. It's exactly. Actually, it's not. It's it was a half a thousandth more. Well, actually, it is. Uh, if you can see that, it's one and five hundred thousandths. There's no getting around it. Uh, you know, I would like for it to be a thousandth bigger, but it ain't. It's one and a half. That's all it is. Okay. If, if I turn this this shaft and I put it over here, okay, it should be. It should go across there with with equal with equal. Um, Let's say drag, it should fit. Okay, and then I have checked this one right here, and where the flywheel go has been, where there is no wire, there was no rotation, so that should be a a true a, a factory surface. From here out, you can see the rust color discoloration, so you know that that's smaller than this. And from this wire line here up this way, where the bearing was at, you can assume that there will be some wire here. Okay, we've got that. We've got that one and a half thousandths, which one inch and five hundred thousandths, which I'm assuming that this was a factory one and a half inch shaft. Okay, if you come up here and measure, it's one and four hundred. And ninety-five and a half thousands. This is the truth of the matter, the size. So this shaft has very little wire. And and there again, you would you would go completely around the shaft and make sure that it had no high places on it. Th this one is it, it it was surprised to me that it was circular. It was not oval. Even in the in the same way in here, and I did work that with a file to get the high place down. And if I may, let's see an example. Right here is one. So what what I'm talking about there is, if you can see this, if you can see that this throw, this journal part here. It's it's in a, I put the micrometer on it, and it does have wire rings circular around there. It don't have no wire rings crossways, but you can see right in the center of that there it has a high place. Well, the the bearings that I'm going to put back on these did not come out of this engine. It's a it's a either a new bearing or one out of another one, and they have been scraped. So that bearing will not fit that wire pattern right there. It may have come out of one that had none or had a wider one or some other different wire groove. So what you do is take a as a wide of a file, these this file's a little bit a little bit gnar. I, I got the other one over on the work, other workbench, but the, uh, a wide of a file as you can get in here and you file that. When when you file it, you, you file it in a circular arc like that and go all the way around and only remove the high place until it just barely touches the two low places and go all the way around it and do not forget to camphor your grease journal as I did here. Camphor that. Uh, you, you do not want that sh to be sharp. It will wear your bearing uh, on the get-go. 
But anyways, you, you file that around through there all the way around until that is true. Now I'm talking about if you don't have a lathe or some mechanical setup for this right here to put it in there. And, and uh, I'm talking about bench work. And even file work is very, very acceptable, like I said. Um, a lot of your old, old steam engines or your really old mechanical engines that just sits there and just runs so smooth, air after air, was uh, fitted up with a file. Look it up. It's homework. Don't take my word for it. And um, a dedicated file. When you're, when you're working on this material have a file dedicated for this material when you're working with cast iron by all means dedicate a file to cast iron and 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 just constantly keep it clean with your file card the uh, and also a brass uh, this file here you see I've got a B on there so I, I would not file anything except brass with this file right here I would not use it on this crankshaft uh, and, and that way you will get the full benefit, longevity out of your file. Well, uh, let's take a break and um, I'll leave a comment. Let's take a break and um, and I'm going to fit I'm going to fit the rod. I'm going to fit this bearing to the crankshaft out here on the workbench. It's just it's actually the about the only way you can do it with any degree of success with these enclosed crankcase engines but I will fit this to the crankshaft and um, and it's just a matter of putting it on there and uh, changing the shims out until until it's um, you know like a half a thousandth or so and um, and, and, and this, if you remember, this shaft right here, uh, when it was all said and done, and I did get the uh, other indicator out um, and, and indicated it from one end to the other, I did take it a little bit further than the last video. And uh, when it was all said and done, uh, off camera, it's, there's no more variance anywhere on this from one end to the other than like one in uh, not it's not a full two thousands it's it's a thousands and something uh you know to to say on era it's it has it's out of, it's out of true two thousands you know i'll take two thousands most any day just give me two thousands and let me go and with that said uh i will continue this uh and the show goes on.